Okay, just do an ammo roundup here of uh, all the different types that I've put through the Chiapa Little Badger uh, the other day. I'm just going to give my thoughts on each ammo type and kind of the rationale of what it, what I'm going to normally use for it and what works best for me. Uh, please understand that as you watched uh, the previous video, I was running back and forth to the targets trying to simulate what it would be like me kind of bushwhacking and coming across small game as I usually, uh, that's how I usually hunt um, for some of my backpacking hunts. And that it's not on a bench rest and a bench vice. Uh, I know I was prone, but uh, trying to give the, the, the rifle the best support I could, uh, my breathing definitely did affect quite a, quite a few of the shot strings for sure. Um, and what I'll do is eventually just take it to the range to to give the ammo the best chance that I can and see how that works as well. So it's so also following up with the uh, five shot strings. I shot them in pretty rapid succession or well as fast as I can with the single shot um, but I didn't wait too long in, in between each shot so um, either simulating you know quick follow-up shots that I would have needed to do while out hunting um, that's what what I get. Um, so when given some of the shot strings are about gaps between three centimeters and about seven centimeters or so I want to say so not too too bad uh, obviously not great not target level <laughs> and what I would like to uh, clearly if I had slowed down took my time um, controlled my breathing um, and go from there and probably change out the sights I would have had a lot better results with this firearm to sort of the specialty ammo which is why I kind of bought the the rifle to begin with um, so what I was using was the Calibri, uh, Super Calibri 22. Uh, it's basically just a primer base, no powder, at about 500 feet per second with a 20 grain projectile. And the second one for the segmented uh, Quiet 22 and CCI, and the uh, obviously the CB shorts by CBI. Now I know there's a couple other ones out there, but Again, I'm going on what's most readily available to me in my area at reasonable prices. And I'll kind of get into the price category and sort of my rationale between what my ammo choices and selection are for it. So as we went through there, we, we saw, you know, a fairly decent grouping here for uh, 10 meters. It was okay. It wasn't fantastic. There was one flyer. I'm not even sure what that was, whether it was myself or whether it was actually the ammo. But if I discount this, it's about a three centimeter gap, which isn't terrible, but it's not also fantastic. And for the price, for me, it's about 22 cents around. Um, again, I'm going to go in Canadian prices here with tax included. So it's a fairly pricey round for getting okay results. Uh, the CCI segmented quiet at 10 meters. 710 feet per second. This one's the most expensive at 25 cents a round. Uh, it's also a little bit harder to find. It's not in all um, sport shops here. So I do have to take a, a look around for it or travel a little bit further to go try and find it. it probably had a one of the best groupings um, on a hole um, for that short of a distance. Um, but then moving on to the CCI CB shorts about three three and a half centimeter group between it all and it's about 12 cents around so getting them in the box of 100 um, almost always readily available i don't think i've ever not seen them in stock 12 cents around um, this one I, I think i was trying to adjust the sights mid string so uh, it had a little bit of impact but overall pretty good grouping and i know if i took my time i could definitely close that up so taking into account the um the more quiet ammo, I'm probably just going to stick with the CB shorts. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive as far as the round goes for something I'm probably not going to use that often. Um, in fact, I don't know when often I'm going to use it, but it's good to have a supply of uh, quiet ammo. I know that the, the chap is threaded for a suppressor, but unfortunately where I'm at, I, I'm not a lot legally allowed to have one, so I'll stick away from those. And then I'll jump up to the sort of the other end of the spectrum here for the higher velocity. So the Winchester uh, HE Varmint 37 grain. So about 1,435 feet per second out of the barrel. 
The Veloster is the same, except you're using a 40 grain hollow point, and the Stingers, as everybody knows, 1640 feet per second for 32 grain hollow point. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting for um, some of the shot strings. As you can see, I was adjusting towards the end a little too high. Um, but again, getting in around a four centimeter gap um, between your longest shot ends. Um, it's also costing me about 21 cents a round, so definitely up, up there in expense. Um, so it's, it was okay. It was, it was not bad, and I'm sure I could um, close it up. Uh, the one that kind of surprised me a little bit more was a Veloster, um, and even then through other uh, 22 platforms, it kind of performs about similar. This one, though, I think that more or less my shot string um, laterally going this way is okay, and I think this had more to do with my breathing up and down um, than the actual ammo itself. So it's still doing pretty good at about 5 centimeters at its longest. Uh, not, not too bad. And... Then sort of <laughs> this opened up. Um, I don't think this was just me. I think this is definitely the ammo. And again, validating that through other shooting platforms. Um, I'll make some other videos with the same ammo types through um, my various other 22s. It is the cheapest at 15 cents a round. Uh, unfortunately, for varmint shooting and segmenting rounds, I don't know that uh, one I'll ever need those. So it's not something that I'll probably pick up again, uh, just to, to the fact that they're not always available. Um, they definitely didn't seem to perform as well as the rest of the group. So now getting into sort of the groupings of between bulk ammo and small batch ammo um, of about 1050 feet per second to about 1280 feet per second. So within about a 200 or less, feet per second difference. Again, for this, because it's not an uh, auto loader, um, I wasn't too, too worried. It's about the same I would need at about anywhere under 40 or 50 meters for, for small game, such as uh, rough grouse or snowshoe hare. And this is where between plinking and shooting, our target shooting and, and small game, I kind of wanted to come up with a, a rationale of why I got what I got. Um, for each one of my platforms and what I would stick with with the little Chiapa. So going over the Remington Thunderbolt here, and I'll just do one at a time. So about 1255 feet per second. I got about a three and a half centimeter gap um, between the longest here. So not too bad. And I think that had to do more with me again with the breathing, uh, going up and down, uh, breathing heavy because I was, I was trying to run to the target and back as the sun was kind of interfering, especially with the red dot, um, just to make sure I could stay in the shade. Uh, but at about eight cents a round, it's one of the cheapest rounds that I can get. And you know, there's a couple of them, other ones in the same price category, but I think overall this is probably one of my best groupings, and I know I can tighten that up if I just took my time. Uh, so we're going into the Winchester M22. Um, now, out of my auto loaders, it performs okay. It's definitely not the best um, out there. Uh, and again, I'll go over those and over my Ruger 1022 and my um, GSG Firefly. But at eight cents around, it's about the same um, 40 grain round nose. Uh, pretty decent for plinking and hunting. Uh, but it, it opened up to about a six and a half centimeter group. And while that may be my breathing again going up and down, um, it still started to spread out a little bit more than the Remington. And overall, that's what I've found in, in the past as well. So going into the Federal Champion box here. Uh, again, this is something that I've kind of found in other platforms too. There's some consistency, although you can see it's sort of stringing here. I'm not sure if I was just jerking the trigger or what. But... I always seem to get a, at least a few flyers, and then this one in a five-shot group having two real flyers kind of par for the course with this stuff. It's definitely bulk ammo. Um, sorry, it's not actually 40 grain round nose. This one's actually the 36 grain hollow point, and it's about 13 cents a round for me. Um, so as far as bulk ammo goes, it's probably on the higher end, and I never seem to get good results no matter what I shoot it up. So the Winchester Dynapoint target. Um, 
It's a little bit hard for me to find these days. I haven't been able to find it for quite some time. So I've been kind of using up this box. It's a little bit lower FPS. I find out on my auto loaders, it doesn't uh, seem to perform all that well. Um, here, it's not too bad with three and a half centimeters, but really no, no marketed difference between the um, Thunderbolt or the M22 and at 13 cents around. Uh, definitely in the higher price category for bulk ammo to me. And then getting into the Federal Auto Match, 40 grand round nose again. This one opened up quite a bit. It's about 11 cents around. I got about a six and a half centimeter spread. So, you know, in the auto loaders too, I've never been successful with this. Uh, a lot of feeding issues, but even for a single shot, it seems to have quite a wide widespread. Now getting into some of the smaller box ammo, and I know you can buy it in bulk too, but um, usually this stuff I just buy at a pinch if I'm running low, which as you can see I probably never will. Um, this is actually on the low end of the spectrum. But at 1130 feet per second for the Aguila, and I know you can bump that up to their um, higher velocity stuff. I've shot a bunch of different uh, Aguila in the in the past in various forms and I've, I've never had success with it either so to have that off the target even with only a four shot string here it didn't didn't impress me that much now albeit I give it the fact that this gun is probably not the most inherently accurate especially with the uh, crappy peep sights on it but I did this all in the same day so taking a look at this CCI mini mag 40 grain round nose I can really see here where my breathing was just up and down. I probably just sprinted from the target back. Um, so it was about seven centimeters total. But I'm confident and I, I know in the past I've been able to tighten those groups up. Um, and the difference between some of these ones and the bulk is I'm getting up to about 14 cents around. So almost double the cost. Um, and this is par for the course for the CCI Mini Mag 36 grain all the points it, they just seem to be all over i can never really get them to be very accurate and i'll hold one up close just so you can see try and get it in focus here i don't know if you can see the little wax cap after a while what i find and it's never been hot, hot in the house but the wax cap just seems to um, drift to the bottom and it gums everything up. And I think if they didn't do that, which they don't seem to for the, uh, the other mini mags, I think it would um, change the accuracy at least of the round or at least the feeding issues that I find, especially in my auto loaders. I just never had good luck with the 36 grain. Um, Winchester Wildcats. Uh, these are, <laughs> it's interesting, when I was a kid these were one of the cheapest rounds that you could buy. Now I'm paying about 13 cents a round and as you can see at about five and a half centimeters it's okay for you know whatever that that is but definitely not worth the money. And again it's not just out of the chap it's there's there's a bunch of other different ones. Uh, if you review the footage from the last video too you'll see the blazer and the American Eagle hit really low on the target. Uh, actually on the cardboard, I showed the short shot string. The, the original group was about seven centimeters for the Blazer and about six for the American Eagle. Um, and the differential between 12 cents around and 10 cents around. Now, if I'm going out to a store and I'm just picking something up along the way, I'll most likely just grab a box of American Eagle. It's a reasonable price for what it actually is. And I know I can tighten those groups up. So they're not inherently bad ammo. But in comparison to bulk ammo that I'm paying for, for substantially cheaper out of auto loaders and especially out of the little, little Chiapa, it makes way more sense for me to stick with something like the M22 or the 22 Thunder Remington Thunderbolt uh, for the little Chiapa. Um, that goes for plinking and running around camp type thing and having fun with the kids at um, you know a camp or out, out on a hike. I'll get into some of the, the benefits of the little chap in, in a sort of a third portion to this video. But I wanted to kind of go over the ammo selection in the end, what I would highly recommend for um, 
if you have a single shot or if you have something like the little chap or the little badger um, and the reasons why I came up with those choices. So for me personally, if I'm looking at really close range and I need to be quiet, CCI shorts, it's hard to beat. Um, they're, they're pretty available. They're reasonably priced. They're not too, too expensive. Um, and they do what I want them to do. Like say it's in a barn and you're dispatching a rat. It's not causing, you know, a huge, a huge commotion like you would with a higher, higher, um, velocity round. Um, and then as far as like bread and butter, I think I'm just going to stick with the 22 Thunderbolt. It seems to provide, um, decent accuracy. Um, again, I'll probably follow up on a, th a fourth video of going through these t at the range and a bench rest to give the ammo more of a fair chance. But for the cost point at one of the cheapest rounds on the table, performing, outperforming most of them actually is there's no reason why I would select um, another ammo type and not advocating Remington Thunderbolt, you know, whatsoever, because it does shitty out of my Ruger 1022. But all I'm trying to get across is that if you've got bulk packs where you can get reasonably priced ammo, find which one works best out of your particular firearm and stick it with a lower cost. Because it doesn't make sense between a 200-ish FP per second difference for hunting. And then again, for the highest velocity, it was kind of a tie between the Veloster and Stinger. I, I like both of them for sort of different reasons. Um, but I think I'd stick with the Stinger. It's just a, an age-old, um, gets the job done if you need a higher oomph. Um, say I need to take care of a coyote or, or something of that nature where um, you probably won't be hunting it with a single shot, but um, at least have a little bit more confidence with a higher impact and uh, kinetic energy to be able to have expansion and all that good stuff. Um, again, trying to go back through um, the bulk ammos, the difference between hollow points and round nose to me, especially for grouse or snowshoe hare or anything, it doesn't make a difference. It uh, doesn't matter what I've used in the past. I've always dispatched them 36 grain round nose or, or hollow point or 40 grain um, round nose. It, I don't find there's ever been a difference. So unless you're target shooting, and again, I'll go probably with the cheapest ammo that works the best and go from there. So yeah, just thought I'd give my thoughts on the ammo. I'll follow up in the video of my thoughts on the little Chiapa and what kind of niche market it fits. Thanks for watching.